Oh, so we're continuing. Let's begin this off on, on the Shanti. The Shanti, and going to make that connection with the black Britain, the seeds, right? The seeds that, um, the seeds that created Europe. Now we're on this page, Essays by Koa, right? And we're continuing from this particular study right here for the Order of the Garter. You know what I'm saying? Which is a continuation of um, which is a continuation of what we posted recently in some of the other vids that are out there. So please get these vids back to up. The old Democratic people start to recognize the truth. You know, who knows what they'll do to stop folks from recognizing the truth. There's two vids out here, Black British Seeds of Europe, the Moors and Black Irish, you understand? I'm making a link with the Amhara, the Amir, the Amuru, you know, we're saying the Moors, then the black, uh, the real black nobility line of Judah, Shiloh, the return, right, right here. This is also two vids, and this is inspired right here, you know, saying this is inspired right here by Koa, and the essays by Koa, you know, we're saying the article that we're looking at right here, and you can see some more of the links and the vids out here, feel free to download, upload these vids, any of I and I vids to make those further, to make those further links out here. All right, so let's continue with the Black Britain, the seeds that created Europe and the Ashan, the Ashanti, right? So here's where we were, right, going from ancient times and bringing it forward. So we have the Ashanti prince. Remember the Ashanti, from where we also have a link with the Bobo, Ashanti. Now we, we, we went over the top in the last video of the cross, right? And how in ancient Egypt it was a marker for land or for territory. So we have um, um, Kemet, we have Gub, Gub, Ta, the Gibbets, you know what I'm saying? the Ta, the Ta, and if you look at that particular um, symbol, you'll see that circle and the line. You understand through it. So the biblical Ashan is also the word that's used for Jerusalem and the environs, right? After the destruction and dispersion in 70 AD, where our black nobility, where we can say God's supremacy manifested in, 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 in the, his true seed, his people, the black people, went into dispersion. When the Romans, Vespasian, and Titan destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, what the Jews memorialized and called the Tisha B'Av, or the ninth of the month of Av, right? So now the Ashan tribe, or Ashanti of Ghana, they derived their name from this even since they were part of the tribe of the Hebrews. So we have an Ashanti prince right here. You understand that we have representatives in Africa of the real biblical Hebrews, but they had run, they had to run for their lives from destruction and relocated in what is what now called Ghana, Africa. The Holy Spirit is linking me with this right here and said to show the island this. So we dealt with the mark, so we dealt with the top and the, and the top. Let's back it up about one or, or two or two steps right here. And let us uh, look for uh, a biblical scriptural verse, right, to back up this that we're about to touch on right here. Um, so we have where it says, um, be a root. Um, they shall be a root. Let's see, root. First of all, let's go root. And let's see, upward, right? There's a prophecy in the scripture. Root and upward is the key words that we're remembering. Hopefully we'll get a... A link on that right there. Now notice this right here. We have first, Second Kings 1930. 1930 was a good year, right? Uh, oh, I mean. 1930, Second Kings, right? It says, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of what? Of the house of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That remnant shall yet again take what root? Right? Downward and be a fruit upward. This is where we're at right now. Now, many interpreters and expositors from, from the children of my people, you understand, the, the Ethiopian Hebrews and black Hebrews and Israelites and Afro-Semitic have made that link that this is 70 A.D. when the Israelites had to flee for their lives from, from um, Romanist white supremacy 
you're overstanding they were getting killed and murdered and massacred, that many were able to flee into Africa. And why they fled into Africa, the same reason why Abraham was in Africa, the same reason why the Israelites went to Africa, the same reason why um, Joseph and Christian Glamadium and Mary and baby Yeshua also went there because they were black people. You understand? They didn't flee into Europe. They didn't go into, into, into the, the, the so-called Far East, into Babylon or whatever like that, Turkey or no place like that because they, they were been spotted. They'd be like a sore thumb. Right? Then we have Isaiah 37 and 31 right here repeating the very same exact verse. Right? The very same and exact verse. Now, something is going on. Remember, it was Judea that was captor. Judea captor. If you look up Judea captor or Judah captor, Judea captor, you will see that Titan and Vespasian, right? Let's just go right here, that Titan and Vespasian, if we, if we write Judea, right, um, um, yeah, yeah, they like to say captor right there, Judea captor. Let's look at Judea captor for a moment, right? This, this is the coinage. They made coinage for that. They were very proud of what they had done. You know what I'm saying? They were very proud of themselves. You understand? They were very proud of what they had done. Judea, I, Iuda. You understand? Iuda, because that's delta right there. Iuda, that's the, but actually the U sound, right? When they say Jehovah, it really is Yahuwah, Yahweh, right? Um, Capta. Capta. You see this right here, the tree? See this Roman right there? You see this maiden? That maiden is symbolic of the maiden of, of, of Israel. You understand? How Eve was raped, we have... Um, Judea rape, and we're looking at, and we've been witnessing a rape of Ethiopia. Why? Because of that biblical Hebrew-Israelite connection. So when you look up Judea chapter, and like we said before, we are saving these right here because sometimes when you try to find some of these images later on to teach in the next lecture, you cannot really find it. Now, let's see this guy right here. You understand? They don't want to show him full, um, full length. Right here. Okay, there we go. You see who did it? Now you can see when you start to look at the other archaeology from the same time. Right? When you look at the other archaeology from the same time, like the coin where it has Yeshua as a, a peasy head. He had the woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? Now you can tell clearly this is a Roman. This is a European. You can see his face, everything like that. But then they want to say that they were the Egyptians. The Egyptians never showed themselves like that. Whether even that old man, old woman, whatever like that, you never see that. That's the peckerwood. You understand? That's, that's right there is a European. You understand? That is a European. So we have this theme now. We're in Judea chapter. Just to explain more about the Ashanti people who are one group of that Beta Israel or Afro Shemitic. Some would say, well, they're Hamites. Really, they are Kamo, right? Kamo Shemitic. Just like the Israelites, just like Joseph was, and his children, rather, Joseph, Asenath, the, the children were Kamo or Hamo Shemitic. You understand? Just like Moses. So if we follow some of the Project Black Jews on, on to that extreme, that basically say, oh, you were Hamite, you were Hamite, you were Hamite, but let's look at when Jah brought them together. You understand? They'll be like the ones who basically had repudiated Moses for marrying his Ethiopian wife. And Yahweh said nothing about that. He, he had no problem with that. But some of the people did. Just like some people have a problem. Some of our own Israelite people have a problem with Ethiopia. And they're making matters worse. You know what I'm saying? Because the enemy can use that. You know what I'm saying? The enemy can use that once again. You know what I'm saying? Once again, we see it right here too. You know what I'm saying? And even look at how, how the woman is... Is, is, is depicted. Now, if you go to Lamentations, right, if you go to Lamentations, you'll see this much more. I mean, look at our full hips, and, and you see how they must have went through an effort to wipe this out right here, to, 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 to smudge it, right? Eudea, you understand? So they didn't put the I there, I Eudea, you understand? And here we have Vespasian. This is Vespasian, one of the Roman generals in 70 A.D., which fulfilled Yeshua HaMoshiach's words. We said stone should not remain upon stone until all these things be come down. 
All right, so we were warned about this. This is a judgment of God against his disobedient people. So we have to acknowledge that. Instead of babbling on about Babylon, you understand, we have to really acknowledge what really, you understand, what really happened. Now, let's look at this right here. This is some color ones. Let's see if we can see any better, right? Some colored ones right here. Here's some of them. I mean, what kind of beasts are these right here? I mean, I mean, just some crazy stuff going on right here. But this is this is what the what the Ashanti and other African Hebrews, right? Other African Hebrews are talking about when we're talking about it. You know what I'm saying? What other African Hebrews are talking about? So the Romans made coinage. You know what I'm saying? To celebrate it. You know what I'm saying? They made coinage. And you can see their faces. So you can clearly tell these are not Israelites. So when people try to do that, oh, they are. Uh, see, if they admit the truth, basically they have our blood. You know, that one drop rule. You know what I'm saying? They, huh? Yeah, this guy, oh, wow. This is interesting right here. Oh, they don't want to show you that picture. But this guy got horns. In fact, look right there. You see it right there? Oh, now it comes up. This guy got horns. This is Vespasian. So, so you can see what kind of devils they were up against. I mean, look at this. You see this? I don't know if you can see this. He has horns. You know what? He has horns right here. Yeah, we can zoom. Can you see that or can't you see that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, he got horns. Go look it up for yourself. Judea Captain. You understand? In fact, he was beginning typing it. And, and it was, oh, this guy got horns right here. This might be a clear one. Well, well he might say it's a reef. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to save all these pictures because we know one thing. The Europeans, you know, are proud of this, so they'll save all these things. They give high value to this. So there'll be some of these things laying around. What we're really interested in is our culture and who we are. Right now, there was the Ark, right? The Ark of, 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 of Titus, right? There was the Ark of Titus, or, right? The Ark, let's see, the Ark, um, let's see, go Ark of Titus. Right, there was the Ark of Titus. Let's look up the Ark of Titus. Right, and when you look at this Ark, they built this Ark to separate. That's where you get the whole idea of the Ark uh, du Triomphe or the Ark of Triumph. Right, you see that Ark right there. They they built this to say, yeah, ha ha. You you black people thought you had something going on, right? And we know that. Um, who was it? Uh, the Roman historian Tacitus, Cornelio Tacitus. We can go through that too. You can look it up. We talk about that the Jews were of the race of the Ethiopians, the Jews that he encountered. And this is, he is circa 70 AD. Look on, B star Some crazy stuff right here. Right? Some really crazy. You can see, you can see that guy. Right? I mean, this was a satanic battle, but it's no different than the satanic battle that we're in right now. So when you look on these things, you can get into some of the more of the details right there. Right? But the only thing they didn't take was the Ark of the Covenant. That didn't, that didn't show up right there. Um, let's, let's look up uh, Jesus, right? Jesus, and look up Roman coin, and let's put black right here and see if we uh, find that coin. Here we go. Here we go right here. You understand? Here, here, here we go on Black History, John Moore. That's what we're talking about, how there's a big difference. I mean, this is one side of the coin, but I don't know if there's another side of this coin, too. Right? There's, there's one side of this coin right here. Let's see. Put this right here, right? One side of the coin. Let's just go to this page for a quick for a quick moment. I mean, we, we're still in the territory. You understand? We just have to, you know, do a fly over and, and, and okay, well, look at that. It's currently it's expired. I wonder why. You understand? Then we have this coin right here. You understand? You see this coin right here? Black history lost, stolen. You understand? There we go. Price on a Roman coin. Right, Christ on oh lost, stolen or or strayed, right? Okay, Thomas Jefferson, yeah, he liked black women. Right? It's a false portrait of Euclid as a white man. You know, a lot of these things that we believe are true are not true. 
And now we're studying and showing ourselves approved right here. Yeah, there we go. Michelangelo had used his family, but this is an actual coin that really shows what Christ looked like. You know what I'm saying? You can see it actually in color. This is a pretty interesting sight. Give thanks to his brother. We'll try to weed through this later on. Let's just save this. Because we don't know if we'll find it when we come back searching for it after the lecture. You understand? Because we're live on the air right now. All right, so let's just back this up, back this up. All right, so this, um, here you have, well, too many people don't want to show it. You understand? They don't want to show it right there. Right? Um, let's, let's, let's do, um, how should we do it? Let's put black first. All right, let's put black first. Black Jesus and Roman Corn. Right? Um, let's see if that works out any better. No, they, they're trying to suppress these pages. They're, they're trying to suppress this because people are starting to ask questions. They're like, well, how come I went to college and I didn't learn any of this in college? You understand? Um, now, here's a, here's a reverse Borgia. This is, this is a reverse Caesar Borgia right there. You know, um, you got, got, we got to kind of like watch some of that right there. You know, because um, we have actual, you know, actual, actual uh, art and fact. So you really can't find it besides, right, not that one, really. What was that? You know, they don't, want, they don't want this one to come up right here. Right here on a Roman, on a Roman coin. You know, so you know it's getting hot. It's just when a lot of their own people are beginning to ask about, you know, what's what. This took a little interesting right here. Alright, let's go here again. And let's see this right here. Alright, they don't want you to get that right there. Alrighty, so I think we informed that we got that already. Give thanks people on Facebook. You understand? Know um so anyway, as we go through this, okay, so you get the idea. You get the idea. There's a lot of suppression of the truth. You know, Tim, because they don't like the fact that it's out there. You know, Tim, but the truth shall rise from the earth is what the scripture says. So right there we have it. A beautiful picture right there, but it seems like it's not on the internet anymore. And you can see the, you know, you can see you, you can see the woolly here. You don't see no white man with hair like that. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got black blood. And if he does, he should be proud of that. You know what I'm saying? And join the real struggle against white supremacy. Really against the deception that has been done to his own people. So let's back this up, back this up right here. Let's, let's back this up. So we have root upward. So you see that right there, root upward. If you click on, it's interesting that both of them, Kings and Isaiah, say the same thing. Because it says in the next verse, for out of Jerusalem, right, for out of Jerusalem, let's, um, right, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. Out of what? Out of Mount Zion. Out of what? Out of Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts, of Yahweh, of our oath, shall do this. Right? Very interesting. Because therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria. He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith Yahweh. That's what we should be praying for Ethiopia and for Africa. Let's understand that. For I will defend this city to save it, for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake, right, for David's sake. You see, because the devil was trying to destroy the seed of God's people. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to destroy the seed of God's people, you know, trying to destroy that black seed. Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christus, he came on a what? A rescue mission. So we find this to be similar right there. So that's one verse right there, right, about taking root downward. Now we're going to find more directly that this is linked with Ethiopia, right? So let's just say beyond, right, beyond, um, let's say Ethiopia. And there's still going to be probably one verse, I think, that there's still one verse in here. Well, actually two verses. Well, two verses. Look at these two verses right here. One says, Woe to the land shadowing with wings. Under the shadow of his wings, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, right? 
like in the shadow of his wings. You understand? Under divine protection. You understand? Under his feathers. You understand? Which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Beyond the what? Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. It says, Woe to the land shadow of wings which is beyond. Now in, in Zephaniah 3 and 10, right, and Zephon, Zephon, Zaphon, Typhon, Zaphon mean mystery, the mystery of God, the mystery of he who be who he be, his divine majesty. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. Now let's return to Ecoa's page right here so we can see that the Ashanti story, their own story, as well as the Ebo, as well as the Yoruba, you understand, the Lemba, and many other people verify this, right? Many fled who were able to get out, who were able to be that remnant, who no doubt had that mark, you understand, that the cross of Christ, that mark, that exemption from judgment, were able to get out, right? And so here we have the link right here with the biblical um, Ashan people, you understand, who had fled from the destruction, dispersion of the Tisha Ba'av, or 70 A.D. So we have this link with this particular tribe now located in Ghana. Then we have the Bobo Shanti also making that link with Ghana, right? So some folks say, well, why are they going to Ghana and not Ethiopia? We have to remember how we were dispersed and to strengthen our own communities. I, I, know, know who you be. Right now, notice something right here. We have the uh, Habashan. The Habashan right here. The Habashan. I don't know if you can see it over here. Is it out of view? All right. We have the Habashan, right? There we go, right here. The Habashan, right? The Habashan is the ancient name of what is now called, some say, Ethiopia, right? The ancient name. Make it a little smaller, right? the ancient name of what is now called, yeah, because of the framing, right? Abyssinia. Now, there's two ways of looking at Abyssinia, right? One way is biblical. The other way is Ottoman Turkish, Mohammedanism, Europeanism, Oriental, European kind of blah, blah, rare, rare. All right, so there's two ways of looking at it. The two truths apply here. So the Habashan, right, of the Selassie family. This is the family... Here, this is his divine majesty, his imperial majesty. This is the mother of our nation, um, Empress Menin, all right? And then, you know, the connection with the scepter as well right there, right? So as we go further, right, let's pray for, pray for our people, especially in times like these. She goes into a lot of other information that we would love to go through point by point. But it's out there. You understand? Basically, she says that we have been bleached out of the picture. Here is Sir Thomas More, a saint, a knight, Lord Chancellor of England, Arthur, and Martyr. You see, whenever people are martyrs, you have to really think, you know, about that. You know saying? Not that that means they were black, but they must have been defending the truth and the right. That means they were defending the righteous black, the righteous African. Now, he was executed at, at Tower Hill, 1535. Now, look at that date and then look at Ethiopia. Very interesting what was going on. Right? He was called, um, British families are the thick-lipped Moors, the thick-lipped Moors, the thick-lipped, right? The thick-lipped Moors on their coat of, uh, coat of arms, uh, their heraldry is descriptive, the descriptive system of hereditary. You know, who be your family? Who you be? Who's your father? You understand? Coat of arms and everything that is associated with it, like badges, flags, and the like. Like a lot of the Rastafari and Haile Selassie the first, um, you know, badges and patches and flags, so forth and so on. It is described in a succinct language, and the language is called a blazon or blazon, right? Which exactly delineates the colors and shapes. Some of these families are still named more, but they add an E to it, right? Now, in the Encyclopedia of, of, of Heraldica, by Barry, it says that Moore's head, you've heard that Moore's head, but then they try to flip a pun on it, call it Boar's head, right? Moore's head is the heraldic term for the head of a black or Negro man, 
right? So we see this coat of arms, which is actually the coat of arms of, of his, uh, uh, quote, holiness, Benedict uh, the 16th, or the XVI. You understand? Know Benedict XVI, this is his coat of arms right here. So you can notice something very interesting about that. Now I want you to keep this in mind when we go into Hala Selassie, the whole Mason versus pre, uh, pre, Freemason. You understand? Um, yeah. So notice right here, as we go further, we have um, the Caput Ethiopicum right here, the Caput Ethiopicum. That's interesting because that sounds similar to what um, Tacitus said circa 70 AD upon witnessing the destruction of Jerusalem and the racial identity of the Israelites of that time. We're not talking about the converts later on. We recognize them. There's the Torah Jews and then there's the, um, you know, um, Rothschild Jews. You understand? Um, but be that as it may, so here's a link with Germany. You see Germany is linked. Germany, the, the heraldry of the Moor shown wearing the they're wearing a crown. That means nobility. That means royalty. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't have no Burger King kind of crowns and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, what is interesting is that she has a lot of very good information here about Negro and Niger and actual facts that you can um, point to. Here's a sister, right? A sister on the throne of England. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Charlotte Sophia, Queen of England. She was a consort of George the Third. Remember, they try to call him a madman. If you see some of the movies out there, you know. So you, when you when you know that and you watch the movie, you can really recognize much. More, it becomes very much more. You watch it intelligently, not not oh emotionally and all that. So she was a great 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 grandmother of Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth, the English um, uh, monarch or queen, and so. She said something interesting. You want to see an African five times removed? Five times removed? Now, here this now links us with another, another page that we have right here. Let's see if we can bring this up. Torah codes. Because when, you know, we hear all this Masonic, Freemasonic talk, they're talking to you like you are stupid. You understand? And they're playing on your emotions and your ignorance. You, you, you over, so that when you agree with them, you consent to something. So when you start to recognize things, they'll say, but didn't you agree? So then they'll try to make you out to be a liar. You understand? The best thing for one to say is that, well, I don't really, I, I, need, to, I need to know some more about this. We're going to bring something up here if we have enough time in this series right here. But um, let us, uh, okay, so there's a little girl. You understand the little girl that his majesty had mercy on. You understand because already the father got vonked out. He got vanquished. So now they say right here, Hala Selassie was a Mason? You understand Hala Selassie was a Freemason? Question mark. When the question should really be, you see how slick the question, how slick woolly the question is? It's not was Hala Selassie a Freemason or is Hala Selassie, but, but they'll probably say was. We know, we know he was, is, and will be. So it's on this page right here, Torah Code 2012 by Midbar Nesher, right? And Psalm 119, 105, Noon, which is one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite, I know I say that a lot, but this is one of my favorite verses where it says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path, so we don't walk in darkness. So we're referring all of this to the Word. So you can have a scriptural, biblical foundation as well as the evidence here. So right here, there's a whole lot of stuff right here on this page, but this is what caught my interest, all right? Because we did a video before saying he's not a Freemason. But now ones, because we're so effective with that, ones are trying to, okay, we're bringing that up here because we got something else we want to show you there um, as time permits, right? So... So now they're trying to debunk it. This was from May 30th, um, 2012. I think roughly around the same time as the video that we um, put out right here. So, oh, hey, what's going on? Okay, this is a Nollywood movie coming up right here. You understand? Um, this is okay. This is what happened. Excuse me. We'll, we'll bring that back in the, you know, bring that back in the link right there. That was from Nollywood. Some of them are kind of interesting if you, if you watch them intelligently. Even they're entertaining too, right? 
Okay, so Haile Selassie was not a Freemason. Was he a builder? He was over the Masons. Look at our part, I think, part one, where we basically broke down Masons in the Bible, carpenters, builders, stone quarries, so forth and so on, and how they worked for David, and how they worked for Solomon. Even in the Quran, there's some very interesting information. We'll just point this out right here, right? This particular book, I don't know if you can find this, maybe on the internet, the star of, or the true star of Al-Islam, right? If you can find this, right, one of Dr. York or Imam Issa's book, when he was in, um, he, he called it Mohammedanism, or when he was on the Islam, on the Islam angle, but he, he, he knew his Islamic things. He couldn't speak well to the Haile Selassie issue. And unfortunately, um, he got his uh, foot in his mouth from our perspective, but we still heal him up on what he did put forward. Now, here's, here's Psalm 91 right here. Look at Psalm 91, right? This is Psalm 91 from the Zabur, what they call in um, Islam on Arabic, the Zabur. We call it Mezmur, right? It says right here, 91, 1 to 4, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Sustainer, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Sustainer. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the sneer of the fowler and from the noisome, the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee, right? He shall cover thee. With his feathers. What? The Almighty has feathers? Sound a little ancient Egyptian. Sound a little African there. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy what? Shield and buckler. The truth of his majesty, thou was shield and buckler. Now, here, this kind of connects. It's an interesting link right here where it talks about how a demon, right, um, took hold of. Solomon's throne for 40 days. And we say the same thing is happening with Ethiopia, but this time for 40 years. You understand? We're getting it for 40 years. And we're like in the 36th year and counting. Notice this right here from um, Al Quran, right? Al Quran 38, chapter 38, verses 34 to 37. It says this And certainly we tested Solomon, and we placed on his chair a body. Then he returned. He said, My sustainer, forgive me and grant me a kingdom such as shall not benefit anyone after me. Verily, you alone are the bounteous bestower. So we made subject to him, to Solomon, the very wind to run by his command as a gentle breeze whenever he desired, desired. Right? And the devils, every mason, right, all the masons of the devil, right, build it for him. They worked for him. Solomon didn't work for them. You understand? Just like they, the Freemasons, worked for his majesty until there was an opportunity. You understand? There was a breach. You understand? Amongst the careless Ethiopians caused a breach. You understand? At home and abroad. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the African Americans turned their back, and the, those in the West also turned their back. So it's the careless Ethiopians at home and abroad. But it says, and the devils, every mason, built it for him, for Solomon. And he had divers, divers to dive in the sea in search for precious pearls. Now, here, um, um, Imam Isa, no doubt you recall him right there, right? Imam Isa, in this book right here. He writes, right, he writes right here that the prophet uh, Solomon, peace be upon him, was married to a woman named Amina. And like Samson in Judges chapter 16, he entrusted his secret of the power he had, his signet ring, to her. Now, Amina was not faithful to Jah, to God, Allah, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? He, she worshipped an idol, really a demon, an idol in Solomon's palace without his knowledge. And here we have, uh, this is the devil's depiction of the jinn that stole Solomon's ring. Notice, notice they made sure it was uh, six-pointed. But really when we speak about the seal of Solomon, we have to understand what the real seal of Solomon is. This is how that connects with that scepter the scepter that was returned to Ethiopia. 
So then we have uh, the accusations made by the Peel Arabs about our symbol. This is our symbol. The Peel Arabs say, you know, the, the, the Peel Arabs, the white Arabs say this in their hatred of, uh, of, of Judaism and the hatred of really us and, and also of the Torah Jews and of everybody, right? Every hand against every man. That's what the Bible said. Now, while the ring was in Amina's possession, a jinn, Obamarinya, a guy named, right, who was called Sakr, like Sakr, Sikaram, right? The drunken one came in the form of Solomon and took the ring from Amina. Now, Sakr, it's a regular Yuhun, now had the power of the ring, right? He took over Solomon's throne and sealed him up. He was only on the throne for 40 days, right, for 40 days. Now, it says, as you go on more in that particular story, it says down here, well, how, right, well, how did Solomon, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did he retrieve his ring from Sakr, the devil? It's a regular yuhun. The answer is one day Solomon was in disguise of his real appearance. Hmm. Sounds familiar, huh? He saw Sakar, the Sikaram, upon his throne, right? Now Solomon, peace be upon him, he tried to convince the people of the land that he was the real king. But they did not believe him. You know, like there's, there's, there's uh, in the um, Ethiopic, um, uh, what's that called, Serak, the wisdom of Serak, could talk about how Bahitawi would be king, and thus the persecution of Bahitawi and the whole connection with Abba Kedus is very interesting. So um, the people did not believe it. So Solomon, peace be upon him, he prayed to Allah, to God, right? Uh, uh, Yahweh, actually, but the Arabs will say, the Muslims say to Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for assistance, and as a result of the sustainer's ever-yielding nature, Solomon's domain was recovered with the help of what? Of the animals. With the help of the animals. And we know his Nazi love animals, right? Mm -hmm. He also gained the shield of protection, right, which is the shield of David from his father, right? Um, and that was to help him from being sealed again, right? And so here's where York points out how the um, Arabs, you know, try to slander the Star of David, and we hear a lot of this kind of crazy talk all over the place. So this is this book right here. We thought it was important just to put this into the exhibit. You know what I'm saying? This particular book right here. All right, check it out. All right? So let's go forward right here with what we're saying about now the relationship, you understand, know of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia with, uh, with, uh, with um, um, Britain. Now, it's interesting because um, I think you see it in our description on the other vid that we put up there. Okay, we got a couple windows here we need to close out, but there's another, uh, uh, another window that we had put up right here. Let's see if we can, uh, uh, some of those that we downloaded and close this right here, right? And let's see if we find it, let's see if we find it in here for a moment. All right, um, let's look up essays by Ecola, um, uh, which, uh, which particular window was it, or was it here? It was actually, was it here, Order of the Garter? All right, no, it wasn't here. Let's go over here. Okay, Black Britain. Okay, it was Black Britain window over here. Um, well, actually, I think it was essays by Ecola. Maybe a little further down, right? Um, or the name is a little bit different. The video that we just uploaded today, you'll see it is on the Jamaican Rastafari belt and the Order of the Garter. And in the description, in the description that's on the, in the description that's on the vid, right? In the description that's on the vid, let's uh, take this to. Um, Let's see, we know the Jamaican, right, uh, Rastafari Bell, just so that we can get directly, in the sense that we can get directly to, right, hopefully it comes up right here. There we go. There we go right there. So you see it, all right? Now, if we can just go to the, um, 
let's put this on on mute so we can just go to the description that's in the video. We want to share this with you so we can understand the relationship. Right? What is the relationship um, between Britain, right? Between Britain, right? Here we go right here. Between Britain, right? Between Britain. And so here's I and I vid. And, and we don't really want to get into any... Um, this is no surprise. Well, good thing. It is no surprise. I mean, it was a surprise at first, but once you find it out, it is no surprise. So, okay, we said down here in the description, we said, uh, okay, okay, right here where we link with essays by Koa right here. All right now, it's kind of small right here, but let's see. Can we, um, can we zoom in on this? All right. All right, there we go. Right, let's see. Okay, it's right on the, it's right on the edge right there, but it's good, right? Okay, here's where we're at, right? There's a link right there. Britain uses the lion symbol, even though there are no lions in Europe. Really, they use what the Gnostics call a a, a lion-like. It looks like a lion, but it's not really a lion. If you look at that coat of arms, it's like a dragon. It's not really a lion. Anyway. But there's no lions in Europe. That's just the point. So they must have, it must have come from somewhere else like uh, Africa, like uh, Ethiopia originally. I mean, how else would you have a symbol of a lion in a country that doesn't have any lions? So, of course, they want to say, well, actually, it's them. They don't, they don't want to admit, because the devil is deceiving them, the black blood. You understand? They admit the truth would be so much easier, but they've compromised themselves. You understand? They've compromised themselves. Anyway. Um, as Imperial Ethiopia, now the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. When the queen uh, mother died, right, a lion emblem was placed on her casket. The British even attended His Majesty's Haile Selassie's Haile Selassie first coronation, November second, nineteen thirty. At first, the Ethiopians didn't want them to attend, since they did steal from Magdala, or Magdala. You understand uh, Tedros and what happened in Tedros and the stealing of the images and so forth and so on of the books and other things like that. But it was allowed because, well, here's the key thing, it was allowed, right, because they also claimed black British links. That's why it was allowed. That's the half of the story they don't want you to know because they claim that. They made that black British connection, all right? So when we are looking at something like, um, when we're looking at uh, something like this right here, right, when we're looking at something like, well, actually it's the next window over here, when we're looking at um, the Queen of, of, of England, right, such as one of this Torah Code page 2012, uh-huh, when we're looking at the Queen of England together, it depends on if you are pointing to the east, turn to the east, or you're disorientated. If you're disorientated, oh, it's like His Majesty is bowing. You know, may, may, may God have mercy in your soul because you, you're lying about things you don't even know when you start to say that. You know, the Queen of England or Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth mm-hmm, you know, there's still, a, there's still a moment or hour for her to repent, for her to just come and, come and spill the beans. Of course, if she did, they would probably kill her, and, and there would be a lot of chaos that would go on. But still, it would, you know, help to fulfill the will. But the Bible says that Jezebel, Elzebel doesn't repent. So, you know, so it is. During the Italian invasion of Ethiopia, during the mid-1930s, Empress Selassie, right, did not only visit it, but also harbored by the British royalty. You see how they're trying to write it? Because you know what they do. You, you see what they're up to. King George the Sixth, right, and Queen um, Elizabeth for five years during the Italian occupation. No, they didn't really. You understand? No, they didn't. They, they, they had to recognize. In other words, he acted on what they claimed. You understand? Know he acted on their claims. You understand? Know if you know Bath and, 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 and Glastonbury, and, and, and Joseph of Arimathea, you know, in that whole link right there and the black blood, then you recognize 
that it wasn't something that they was doing because of their so-called beneficence. You understand? I mean, when you recognize what happened to um, um, the father, you understand, and the gift. And that's also on the next page that we saw, and this page is also interesting because it makes the tire connection. It makes this tire link and this, well, all the entire connection and the entire link is made for us. We have it on another computer over here. You understand? But anyway, so it's this vid, right? It's this vid right there. And um, what happened? The page went back. Okay, the page went back. So let's go forward again. Just to finish reading that so we get the whole thing right there, right? So we'll recognize. So even though there's no lions in Europe, right? So here's some of our nice people and others. Our wall, Ms. Gunner, will give thanks to His Majesty in the name of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's 44. So right down here. Here we go, right? Here we go. And we're looking for this document, if anybody has it, right? But anyway, let's go through this right here. So, so what do we have right here? So, um, at first, the Ethiopians didn't want Britain to attend. Then there were only 71 nations, not 72, right? Since they did steal from Mekdala, but it was allowed because they claimed black British blood links. And we know that with Colin Powell and, you know, and so forth. I mean, there's a whole bunch of more... Um, links that are out there. Um, so they claim to be from the royal house of David, just like Imperial Ethiopia. Now the scepter of Judah, of Yehuda, um, who was stolen from ancient Ethiopia and Egypt, because some, when they say Egypt, they mean Ethiopia. Sometimes when they say Ethiopia, they mean Egypt. And you can see that they don't really know for sure, you understand, but they are kind of like hedging their bets with all the maps that they have made over the years, all right? Right, um, by Julius Caesar. Remember the whole story about Caesar and Cleopatra? And they, they make a love story. They spin a yarn. You understand, get you emotional about it. So you really don't see the real history there, right? And then he rewrite the history by using the love story as the cover story, right? Then the British returned this stolen item. They returned that stolen item which is documented in this eight-page document right here. The title is Notes on the Gold Scepter, which has been presented by His Majesty George V to His Majesty Haile Selassie, King of Kings of Ethiopia, and the Gold and Ivory Scepter, which has been presented by Her Majesty Queen Mary to Her Majesty Wazero Menes. And when you look at this a little bit more right down here, You'll notice it was published in 1930, and it only has eight pages. We've seen this document. We've had a complete copy, but, you know, um, in allowing, I guess, certain ones and ones, people remove pages. You know, when you don't understand how to properly discern who's who. But be that, that as it may, you know. Um, so we see this link right here, and this stolen item, the scepter, which was stolen from ancient Ethiopia, Tobia, ancient Ethiopia and Egypt, right? It, by Julius Caesar or during the Julius Caesar, Mark Anthony, all of that Caesarian time, right? Um, then the British returned this stolen item to the lion of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, the king of kings of Ethiopia, by the hand of the English Duke of Gloucester. That's the reason why... He did not reign, you know what I'm saying, because he had said, and this is recorded, he says, how can I, because remember in the British, in the British, um, what they call it, oath, right, the, the coronation oath, the Yovas, they say that they are reigning, you know what I'm saying, they are reigning for um, Jesus Christ. So when they saw Christ in his kingly character, how could they, you know what I'm saying, how could they um, reign? You know, and, and he basically said that, and that's the reason why he didn't. And then eventually Elizabeth, she stood up or whatever, or stood down or whatever, but she basically reigned and said, there's another page here that we didn't put in this because we were speaking about the, the order of the garter. Now, we said some interesting things here. We just want to make a note right here that if you look at the order of garter page, first of all, we quoted Second Timothy 2 and 3 where it says, Thou... Male, the eye, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. Today they call it a Christian knight. 
and they took off Christian, and it's called a like knight. You, you know what I mean? And then he took off the K for Christ, and now it's just knight without any light. But in truth, it was a good soldier was a Christian knight, a Christian warrior of Jesus Christos. Now, if you go to the Wikipedia link right there, um, you'll find some of this information, and we made a commentary here that the first and to date only member of the order from Africa, as they say, was Haile Selassie I, the last emperor of Ethiopia, the first and the last, Aleph Tav, right, created a, what they call a strang, a stranger, a stranger, right, a stranger knight in 1954. But wait, we said, we said, but wait, was not the very founder of the order of the Garter, Edward the Third, a black British king? Why do they hide and bury his picture in the Wikipedia pages? Now, click here and we'll see more and more to come.